driving and car tours became very popular at the turn of 1900. What was it like using a map from back then? Were they even viable? Could they tell you precisely where to go without giving you photographs? I'm going to give you a little bit of a timeline of road maps and give you an idea of what you had to expect if you wanted to drive from city to city back in the very early 1900s. Hey, hello, how are you? Welcome to Road Odyssey. I am Bert. Hope you're having a fantastic day. And please subscribe. I would really appreciate it very much. And bless all of y'all who have. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Now, once in a while, I really enjoy adding variety to my channel. And this video is one of many examples. I am talking about early 1900s automobile maps. Now, if you've seen or watched the Grand Tour series with Jeremy Clarkson, Richard Hammond, and James May, you would have seen probably several episodes where they had to navigate in a very vague manner across rough uh, terrain. So they, in my mind, illustrate great difficulty in several clips. And let me give you a quick example of this. Here it is. Antics illustrate very well the basic idea of what early 1900s automotive touring uh, might have been like. So one essential item that automobile tourists would have most coveted was a good map. Now map beginnings were really quite sensational. And they did provide some hope of reaching destinations. Well, so long as the maps were up to date, um, because they used landmarks and things like that. Landmark moves, maps no longer up to date, could be a little confusing. Um, so let's travel back in time and see the reality of how well early 1900 maps provided drivers with destination directions. So, here we go. Before I get into this, here are two of my older road-related videos that you might want to look into. Early roads. Roads, whether they're in the city or country, back in 1900 to 1905 and beyond, had a lot to be appreciated. They were rough, and it was not unusual to have to drive through creeks and low river beds and ask horses for some help. Popularity Cars became popular enough, quickly enough, early. I mean, well before 1910, you had gas stations, you had clubhouses, you had doctors' cars, really? Uh, cars for police and fire. And what is really cool to me were the amazing car shows. And these pictures are still from 1905. Early car examples. As I look through just 1905 documents, these are just a smattering of examples of the huge number of car companies that were out there. Needed items. Now, I thought this was very interesting. And, of course, some of these things you know were very well needed, like lights. But did you also know that, well, other than batteries and jacks, spark plugs and things like that, you needed goggles. You needed automobile garments. Not only that, you had to have, well beer, and champagne. 
Not only that, it was good to have a dog. Why? Because they were your car alarm. What else was needed? Well, of course, maps. Today, the finest maps, formerly the prized possessions of the privileged few, can be had for the asking. Presto, and right at their fingertips, modern motorists can have an information bureau on any road they may wish to take. But how many of us ever stop to think what a tremendous task it is to keep constant check on the millions of miles of roads in the United States? Very, very early maps of the U.S. obviously existed. Now, most notably for road systems, you had railroads. So they had very good detailed maps. Railroad maps with all their details that are certainly possible, this would be a great idea. But the driver would have to get access to the maps and somehow either make notes, get copies, or something to utilize that information. There are also the Sanborn insurance maps, for example. These were really extremely well detailed town or city maps. They had all the roads, the houses, buildings, railroads, everything imaginable. What was needed were maps dedicated to driving the actual automobile roads. In 1789, the Survey of the Roads of the United States of America was printed. This was an atlas that had two to three maps on each page. The atlas was a subscription that when pages were mailed to the subscribers, the subscriber had to bind the new page to the atlas. I applaud the people for making this. This was great. Although it was limited in scope in terms of territory, no signage in order to utilize, and easily out of date at a blink of an eye. Then came 1901. Charles Howard Gillette, a Hartford, Connecticut businessman, established the Columbia Lubricants Company. And being a car enthusiast, he had a vision. He created, by 1901, the first truly useful automotive road guides. This was called the Official Automobile Blue Book. It covered 62 routes from Boston, New York, Philadelphia, Washington, and Baltimore. This book grew from 1901 to 1929 to include the U.S. and Canada. It was best known for its point-to-point -point road directions at a time when numbered routes generally did not exist. It used mileage between towns and mileage between each instruction. It listed local landmarks, state motor laws, hotels, repair shops, recharging stations, ferries, steamboat schedules, rates, etc. Then came the AAA American Automotive Association. Mr. Charles Gillette, who made the official automobile blue book, was a secretary for the American Automobile Association. Likely due to that connection, at least to some degree, the AAA took the automobile blue book and made it their own. Before 1906, the AAA had handmade roadmaps that were few and far between. In 1906, the AAA officially sponsored the Automobile Blue Book. In 1907, the AAA reorganized the Blue Book to include more maps of cities and routes, removing maintenance in favor of advertisements for automobiles and touring, and readers could find more information actually related to planning trips and laws for each state. Automobile Topics, the publication series. If you want a lot of cool information and photographs, look up Automobile Topics. I looked at several volumes from 1905, and each one of those in the series had maps within it, 
and they look like pretty decent maps, but this is not something that I've found a lot of information on elsewhere. As a matter of fact, just try doing Automobile Topics Illustrated Google search with keywords like Wikipedia, history, and so forth. You might find some really cool references, but it's not listed in very obvious history information. A historic, relevant, and prevalent name is Rand McNally. Ignoring the gigantic history of Rand McNally, this photo auto guide was introduced in 1905 and issued by several companies. They contain photographs of major strategic turns with captions including the directions of the turn along with the mileage to the next intersection. The strip maps were directly linked with the turns portrayed in the photographs. The most popular issues of the photo guide were between 1906 and 1910. How would you like to try to keep all these varieties of guides up to date? The Lincoln Highway. The Lincoln Highway was conceived in 1912 by Carl Fisher. While seeding mile projects had begun back in 1914, this complete project would be worked on all through the 1920s. By 1925, the government joined in all of this rebuilding and took control. They started the U.S. Highway System, which was good because they standardized Road numbering, highway numbering, naming, all that kind of good jazz. I add the Lincoln Highway because in my mind, it was a great example of a historic event in the U.S. that helped promote better maps for individuals who wanted to go on car tours. Let's review. I created this very distilled down timeline hitting only the most well-known events. Beginning back in the 1800s, the Sanborn Insurance Maps, Railroad War Department Maps. 1902, the Blue Book, the AAA with their first hand made back in 1905. 1907, the Blue Book again having more in it for people's actual tours. Rand McNally, also right in there with the photo auto guide. One thing I didn't talk about, the Baldwin auto guide that was very good. And like I showed you earlier in this video, Automobile Topics Illustrated having maps in it as well. Uh, all through that time period. Finally, you get to 1911. The AAA produced its first interstate map. And then by 1912, 13 through 15, I just put 1915, the Lincoln Highway Road Guide finally came out. And then you have the Federal Highway Act of 1921. And that pretty well sums it up and gives you an idea of how fast this stuff began to really gain momentum as a result of cars becoming more prevalent and like with the Fords becoming less expensive for the middle class and really actually most everybody. This could actually represent a huge cultural change in the early 1900s just with the advent of the automobile. So much more not included. The horseless age. Starting back in the late 1800s, this was a highly technical series. There were plenty of other map makers for various reasons that were out there. Really cool inventions that just Google this stuff. You will find a lot of it out there. And, you know, these things were cropping up from all over the world. All right, that'll do it for this video. So, hope you enjoyed it very much. And I should have... Um, links in the description down below that tell you where I got pretty much all of this information. I'll probably leave a, th a few things out here and there. And uh, anyway, hope that helps a little bit. Hope y'all enjoy this. 
And like I said, just a little bit of variety. Don't you like variety sometimes? It makes life a little more interesting. So with that, relax, take it easy, and I will see you later. Bye.